Hello humans. Today, I'm gonna to teach you how to create a simple text adventure game. To show you what we're doing exactly, I'll show you the finished product first. Our game starts by asking our name, and I'll say that my name is Kyle and hit enter. Now, we have to pick a weapon, and I'll go with a sword this time. I'm told that I've awoken in the middle of the woods, and that I need to pick a path to try to get out of here. I'll pick the left path, and suddenly, a goblin jumps out from a bush and attacks me. He hits me first, dealing 2 damage, and I hit him back for 5. He attacks me again, but I finish him with my next swing. The goblin falls, and I get 2 gold for winning. I then see that I reach my grandma's house, who has freshly baked cookies. I finish the game with 6 health and 2 gold, and if I want to continue the story, I need to buy the $60 expansion. Classic. So, that's what we're gonna make. Obviously, this is a very short game, but once I show you the basics, you'll be able to expand on this however much you want. To start, let's include our name, date, and purpose of this file at the top. Now, we can get a game plan together for the rest of our code. We need to start by asking the user their name and weapon preference, and then we'll set their stats accordingly. We'll then ask if they want to take the left or right path, and we'll code scenarios for both. Then, we end the game and print the player's remaining health and gold. That being said, let's hop into data collection. To start, I'll welcome the player to my text adventure game. I'll then ask what we should call them, and I'll store their response and username. I'm then going to instruct them to pick a sword or a bow, and I'll store their response within weapon. Normally, I'd validate their input immediately, but I'm going to do so when we set the player's stats, and you'll see why in a minute. In my game, the player will have health, money, and attack power, so let's do those now. I'm going to say that each player starts with 10 health and no money. Now, I want to set player attack, the stat that decides how much damage our player's attack deal. But I don't want this to be the same for everyone. If a player selected a sword, then I want them to do 5 attack damage. Otherwise, if they have a bow, then I'll say that they deal 2 damage per attack. Now, here is where I'll validate weapon. I'll say else, print, invalid choice detected, exiting game, and then I'll use sys.exit to end the game. In case you missed last episode, sys.exit exits our program, meaning it stops our code when that line of code gets executed. Sys is included in your Python installation, so I'll add my import statement at the top and we are good to go. Now this section of code reads, if weapon is sword, attack is five. If weapon is bow, attack is 2. If weapon is anything else, then our user didn't follow instructions and we need to end the game. Since we will likely need to exit the game anytime the user enters bad info, we will most likely need to code it again. To save myself some time down the line, I'll go ahead and make this into a function. At the top of my file, I'll create function exit game, and I'll cut the code from my else block and paste it into my function body. Now, in my else block, I'll call exit game. The functionality of the else block hasn't changed, but now if I need to exit the game somewhere else, I can type one line of code instead of three. Okay, now that we've got the groundwork done, we can actually start the adventure. I'll tell the player that they wake up in the forest and need to pick a path going left or right. I'll let them type in a choice, and I'm going to set up all of my if statements for this next bit first, and I'll go back and fill them in later. I'll say, if choice is left, then this will be the fight with the goblin. For now, I'm going to say pass. Pass is a keyword in Python that says do nothing. We use pass as a placeholder for when we want to skip a section of code and come back and fill it in later. Anyway, I'll say if they pick right, then this will be the loop path, and again, we'll pass for now. Lastly, we can say else exit game. If they didn't pick left or right, then we want to exit the game by calling the function that we made earlier. Since the loop path will be much simpler than the combat path, let's do that first. I'll delete my placeholder and I'll tell my user that they stumble upon some gold laying in the middle of the road. I'll add 5 to their money variable and that's it for this path. The left path is going to be a bit more complicated, but I'll start by replacing my placeholder with out of nowhere a goblin jumps out and attacks you. Now we need to do three things. We need to create the stats for the goblin, how much health does it have, how much damage does it deal, and then we need to enter combat. While either the goblin or player has more than zero health, then we continue fighting. When one of them reaches zero, we need to see who died and take the appropriate action. 
To create the goblin, I'll say that goblin attack is 2 and goblin health is 6. Since the player and the goblin are both going to keep attacking each other until one dies, we need a loop. While goblin health is greater than 0 and player health is greater than 0, then they will engage in combat. We use and here because if one of them falls to 0 health, then combat ends. Both fighters need to have more than 0 health for the fight to continue. Since the goblin surprised our player, the goblin hits first. I'll tell the user that the goblin hit them for goblin attack damage, which is 2, which means 2 needs to be subtracted from our player's health. So player health is equal to player health minus goblin attack. When our player attacks back, we are going to say, you swing your sword or you shoot your bow, depending on which weapon our player selected. I'll say, if weapon is sword, then you swing your sword at the goblin, dealing player attack damage. I'll do the same thing for the players who selected a bow. Now, we need to subtract player attack from goblin health, and we are done with combat. So, our loop is going to run over and over until either the player or goblin dies. If we move below our loop, at this point, we know one of them died. So let's check to see who fell, and react accordingly. I'll say, if player health is 0 or less, print, you died, thanks for playing, and I'll call sys.exit. I'm not going to use our function exit game because that's only for when a user inputs invalid information. Anyway, I'll say if the goblin died, then our player collects 2 gold off of them, so money gets 2 added to it. You can add more events to these paths, but I'm going to keep things short for the sake of the video. I'll print that the player reaches grandma's house, who has fresh cookies waiting for them. I'll print out that they have this much remaining health and this much money, and then inform them that if they want to keep playing, they need to pay us more money, because that's how games work in 2020. So, we're done coding at this point, but that doesn't mean we're finished. We need to run this a few times to make sure everything is working. I'll say my name is Kyle, and that I want a bow. Instead of picking a path, I'm going to say neither, and I can see that I'm booted out of the game, because I picked an invalid choice. I'll run this again and say my name is Kyle and that I want a bow. I'll pick the right path this time and I'll see that I get gold and arrive at grandma's house with 10 health and 5 gold. I'll run this one more time, but this time I'll choose to go down the left path. Now we can see that the goblin and I go back and forth several times, but I ultimately kill him and collect his gold. I then arrive at grandma's house with 4 health and 2 gold. Not quite as good as my previous runs, but that's alright. That's it for this video, but if you want to improve on this, there are a million things you could do. You could add a randomized accuracy component so the sword deals more damage but misses a lot versus the bow that doesn't hurt as much but always hits. Adding other weapons, paths, and opponents could keep you busy for a long time, so have some fun while growing your coding skills. If you're going to add a bunch of entities, then I'd advise setting up some classes for them as it will make your organization a lot better. As always, a big thank you for liking, subscribing, and ringing that bell. Comment below with suggestions for future videos, or leave us some feedback on this new series. Either way, I will see you in the next one.